Hello everyone, welcome to episode 6 of the Lewis Cooper Experience podcast experience. I really had to think then what number it was and how many fingers that is, um, but it's that many. Um, that's really confusing because it's reverse, but yeah. Anyway, whoa. I don't know, I had a weird moment there. Anyway, um, in some positive news, um, straight away, I've sorted out the audio issue so I can use my headset again. It turns out there's an annoying buzzing sound in the headset when I record when my laptop is plugged in. And I always like to have it plugged in when I'm using it, but I've got it unplugged now and I've got about 90% battery. So I reckon just be able to record this. Um, but yeah, let's get straight in. I hope everyone is well. Um, standard format, I want to talk about my movie of the week and then we'll go on to Comic of the Week, Figure of the Week, and then a News Roundup. Um, so my movie of the week is one that I watched for the second time the other day, and that is The Lighthouse. It is the Robert Eggers, Eggers film starring Robert Pattinson and Willem Dafoe. And I saw this film probably back in uh, February, I think, at the cinema, back when you could go to cinemas and everything was fine. Um, well, here at least. Um, because it came out last year in America, but it didn't come out so early this year over here. And this is one of the films that I googled every day trying to see when it was showing near me kind of thing um it was this honey boy peanut butter falcon and uncut gems i googled them every day for months and months and months waiting to see when they'd be showing at like a small indie cinema or something because they're all quite small films um i really like robert eggers previous film the witch uh, i thought it was really really good exactly my kind of thing my kind of horror film um and when i saw the trailer for this one i, I, I was like that is precisely my kind of thing um but when i saw it i had a really mixed experience with it when i saw it at the cinema because um I got into a habit of, again, in the olden days of going to the cinema on Saturday like after work and it was the nearest one to me was, the nearest cinema it was showing to where I was was quite a distance away so I had to drive a little distance to get there um, and I was just quite tired and I, this became a recurring thing when I go to the cinema on Saturday so I stopped doing it, I mean I stopped doing it altogether but so I, I was just very sleepy during the film and that's not a knock on the film I'm just, you know, I'm getting older now and these things happen and I was tired so I dozed off a fair bit and which I never do because that's just a proper dad thing to do but um, but yeah, so I didn't get the full experience of it and I was like, I don't know if I like that film but then I thought I won't judge it because yeah but I got um, Sky Movies recently and it was on there so I thought, you know what, I'm going to give it another go and I really, really liked it this time I was like, yeah, this is, this is what I hoped it would be um, I was trying to explain to somebody what it's about but you can't really do that because it's not really about anything as such it's just things weird things that happen it's just it's literally basically the two of them the two lighthouse keepers or a lighthouse keeper and his assistant kind of thing and it's just them gradually going quite mad and there's just loads of weird imagery and them fighting and arguing and them being friends and then it just kind of it's, I described it as like watching a play because it's all kind of set in almost one location you know there's a few other rooms and what have you but and also it's like looking at paintings it's so interestingly shot like it's an extremely narrow aspect ratio that really focuses your attention on everything which was especially weird to watch at the cinema because it was like half the screen wasn't being used which is really odd i can imagine if people didn't know what they were in for um they would probably think there was something wrong with the screen or something like all the projection but there wasn't and it's in black and white and the sound is really prominent like at the beginning there's just the the like foghorn going and it's just really loud and just like so it's a really interesting experience visually and audibly it doesn't quite translate onto the small screen but not you know not doesn't take away from it as such um it's just that the cinema was quite but well, very unique um but yeah um it, and also yeah i say it was like watching a play looking at an incredibly absorbing painting and also having a bad dream at the same time and again i don't mean any of that in a bad way i um i think the performances of it really carry it. i think william defoe is probably the like you know the, one of the best actors to have not won an oscar yet hopefully he, he will at some point and robert pattinson's just really hitting his stride like he's always been a good actor but he's he's kind of done a lot of indie stuff like this been smaller than this for a long time and now he's really kind of really you know uh, becoming someone really special I mean he probably always was but you know it's really if, um, people are starting to notice a bit more is probably a better way of putting it um, and he does this American accent in the film which I feel is a little over the top and a little theatrical but it, it really it works really well in the context of it um, and looking at the film it must have been a really horrible film to shoot kind of thing in a way especially for those two like you know quite big name actors to be in this horrible little dingy place where it's probably wet and cold and just kind of you know you, you think they you, when you're a big movie star you just everything's comfortable but they, I feel like they wanted to do this like indie film and really get involved and get uh, down and dirty and get into these characters which makes me really respect them as actors as well but um, 
it is definitely not a film for everyone. I imagine most people might not like it. If you, it's not a film you watch if you just want to relax and have a good time. It's not that kind of thing at all. But it, I found it very interesting, very absorbing. But then I like weird stuff, so it might, you know, it might just be me. But it definitely has got quite quite a big audience, um, you know, because there's always a market for these kind of things. But it's just not, you know, for, not for everyone. I would say, but I liked it. So, The Lighthouse is my film of the week. My comic of the week is. Green Arrow Year One, and this is—I think I've shown one of these before—but it's the DC Comics graphic novel collection, which is uh, kind of reprints by Eagle Moss. Um, they reprint classic DC graphic novels, um, and they're pretty affordable. I got loads off of uh, Zavi. I got ten for twenty-five pounds, and I got two lots of that. So um, I think it was ten or it was fifteen. I can't remember now. It's a lot anyway. Um, but this is uh, yeah, Green Arrow Year One, which came out in two thousand seven originally. Um, and it's just a retelling of Green Arrow's origin. And these are quite nice hardback books as well, as you can see. Um, but it's by Andy Diggle and Jock, um, who are two guys I've been familiar with for a long, long time because they worked on 2000 AD originally. They're both British. I assume they are anyway. Um, and I read lots of their stories. They, they did The Losers as well, which was turned into a Hollywood movie with Chris Evans, Jeffrey D. Morgan, and... Um, quite a few others as well but I can't remember the minutes I haven't seen it in over 10 years but um, yeah they I really like me find a good example I, I'm only about halfway through it but I'm enjoying it it's kind of a sim, not simplified but you know back to basics kind of version of the origin kind of thing and there's just some really Jock's artwork is really unique like it's he's recently done some Batman stuff in the well, I say recently in the last five years or so I think it was but there's not much kind of detail in kind of the backgrounds and that it's all very kind of broad but um but like the, his artwork really lends itself well to more kind of dynamic scenes and stuff like that like that really kind of jumps out at you if you see there's nothing in the background there really it's just white or blue for example but where um oliver's smashing that guy in the face it's pretty um pretty striking and i like that i think it lends itself well to this but then you know you've got big big splash pages of the island there and that's pretty cool um but yeah, I'm enjoying this. Um, I'm not the biggest Green Arrow fan, but this is um, this is really good. It's um, it's what the TV series was quite largely based off as well. Um, there's a few cool shots there on the island when he first gets his bow and arrow and this uh, green hood that he just happens to find. Um, but yeah, it's I say they took a lot of cues from this for the the TV series and what have you, and I think that's quite apparent. Um, but yeah, it's really really nice sort of really striking artwork there. But yeah, I'm enjoying it. So I'm about halfway through it. Um, but I'm really into it. It's really good. Um, but yeah, Green Arrow, year one, my comic of the week. And now, action figure of the week. Isn't technically an action figure, but it is on theme because The Mandalorian Season 2 just started yesterday. I've just recorded another video about it just now, which will be up before this. The video will be up on Saturday. This should be up on Sunday. So if you're watching this, go back and watch that as well. If you have watched The Mandalorian Episode 1, and even if you haven't, it's only minor spoilers anyway. But... Today's action figure. You see this guy in the background of all my videos, Baby Yoda, or the child as he's correctly known, but I have no problem with people calling him Baby Yoda. This is the uh, plush one that uh, my friend from my work, Holly, uh, sent to me for my birthday when we were in the middle of lockdown, which is really, really nice of her. Um, and I really appreciate it because I think he's super cool. It's one of those things that I probably wouldn't have brought myself, but I'm really glad I have it. It's a really nice gift. That's the best kind of gift. Um, but now I've got it, I kind of want all of the Baby Yodas. Like Amazon recommended to me earlier based on my search patterns, just all the Baby Yodas. Um, I would quite like the one, the Funko ones, or there's like the animatronic one, which is bigger than this and does all the movements and stuff. But I like this guy. He's cool. I like his little robes and that. Um, and his big old ears, but yeah, I might get the Lego one as well. Not the really expensive Lego one because that's that's quite a lot. But yeah, he's uh, he's cool. I like his little hand. He's the when he does the magic hand thing. Um, it just waves. But yeah, he's uh, he's got that little troublesome look on his face that Baby Yoda has. But yeah, I think he's a really cool character. I know like some people get on the case of the character and like you know say it's like Porgs from Episode Eight where they're just there to sell toys, which you know, like, yeah, probably. But why not? I think he's cool. I like him. He's a cute character, he's mysterious, and I think he's great. But yeah, I'm not a big soft toy guy, but you know, I like I like this guy. And I like that he's always sitting there in the back of the video. Obviously today he's not because he's in my hand. But um, yeah, I'll see if I can prop him up there. No, it doesn't matter. There's a cool lightsaber in the background there. Um, yeah, I own a lightsaber. What about it? Um, so into the news roundup section so as i said mandalorian season two started yesterday i really really enjoyed the first episode thought it was great um very hot very high action um i said done a whole video talking about it so check that out i might link to it if not it'll be in the previous video section um so yeah check that out if you're a star wars fan if you like the first series it's 
got off to a great start so i'm enjoying that um and just um just came out about an hour ago quite sad news actually is that uh, sean connery passed away at the age of 90 the og james bond and you know highlander um the untouchables many many other films like um he was a bodybuilder back in the 50s as well look that up because he was in ridiculous shape but yeah i, I like sean connery he was uh, he was a great actor um there's some great stories about him um, um, just getting into trouble, like him and Michael Caine and stuff like that. And like, imagine hanging out with those guys back in the day. Like, that's got to be pretty crazy. I think my favourite Sean Connery role um, is in The Rock, the Michael Bay movie with Nicolas Cage, where he's the the master kind of uh, thief and escape artist sort of thing. I think that's probably one of my favourite ones. Like his his charisma really came through, and it's you know, later in his career he was, he was a bit older, but um, but yeah. I think that's probably my favorite. But yes, that's really sad news. But, you know, it's, uh, he had a hell of a career and his works were still there for us to go back and enjoy. Um, Highlander as well, when he played a, he was a, an Egyptian character with a Spanish name, with a Scottish accent, you know, Ramirez. But, you know, that's that's pretty crazy. But, you know, if anyone can pull it off, it's Sean Connery. But yeah. Um, but in a positive bit of news, Joe Pesci is still alive. So that's great. So I'm happy with that. But yeah. Um, that concludes my news roundup for today. Um, thank you very much again for watching. Like I say, if you want to check out my Mandalorian review, my 2000 AD reviews, I've got a few other videos on movies, TV, etc., etc., and comics. Um, please leave a like. Please subscribe. My subscriber count is going up nicely, and I'm really liking it, and it inspires me to keep doing videos. I recently posted another short film as well called Boys, which is about dogs and how great dogs are. Um, so please check that out. Um, thank you very much, and I will see you all next time.